I've always used guide scopes for my guiding setup, but that is going to change today because today we're going to take a look at the SV238 from SV Boney, which is the new all access guide. So let's try to get this thing unboxed and installed. As always, when I do these videos, I just want to be 100% transparent with you guys that SV Boney, they did send this all access guide to me and I can keep it after the review, but they have no say in the production of the video. Okay, here we have it. Let's go ahead and open up. Let's see what we're dealing with here. So, manual. Yeah, fine. Here we have it. Cool. So, if you don't know what an off axis guider is, the idea is that there's a prism sitting here and um, it come, takes light from your image circle on your telescope, just the normal light that goes through the telescope. It comes up here and then you put your guide camera here. So you use your main telescope as a guide scope, basically. So overall, all metal construction here. There is a ring sitting in here. Just gonna take that off. Um, just a step down ring. You can see that in there. Get this box out of the way here. There's a step down ring. I think this one here is M, I want to say 54 or 52. Yeah, okay, it is M54. So we have that. We have a step down to M42. Then we have another plate that you can replace this with here. This is for, um, for M48. What else do we have in the box? Another step down ring. I think there's also steps down to M42. Yeah, it does, and it probably fits there. Yeah, so you can step this one down as well if you want to. And then there's just a bag of all the little screws and Allen keys that you would need. Cool. So let's look at it. What do we have here? We have this one here. You can loosen that and we can probably, yeah. Now you can make adjustments to how deep into the image circle the prism goes. So you want to make that go down so it sits just without covering your main sensor, of course, but you don't want to necessarily sit all the way up there because if your image circle is not large enough, it might not be able to actually go down there. So for now, we're just going to leave that there. Up here, helical focuser. There is a thread up here at the top. Um, M42 thread up here, so you can just thread on an adapter if you want to do that. And I'm guessing, yeah, yeah, a screw in there. And there's probably one more somewhere yeah, there. They're usually spaced out at 120 degrees apart. And it looks like that's also the case here. Okay, so they'll just clamp on a little metal ring in here so they don't dig into the actual body, but they clamp in on a ring. Here we go. Small guide camera. Slide in there. Probably not that deep. You probably want to sit it up here or something. And there you go. And now you can adjust the focus fine-tune the focus by turning the focusing ring and there are allen keys i see drop drop screws there there actually four of them three of them around the perimeter i'm wondering if those are for locking the focus in so let's say that oh they are even smaller really no doesn't it just fit no it doesn't hmm okay Getting all the fruits out now. Let's see. I have one here that's that's a smaller. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe they're not for locking in the. I figured that. Ah, you know what? You don't need tools. That's this one goes here. Ah, of course. So you can. Adjust the focus, and when you have the focus where you need it, you just tighten that down. And yeah, and that locks locks the focus. Of oh, course, that makes a lot more sense that you don't. It's also weird that you would need tools, because that's something you want to do out in the field. You don't want to sit in the middle of the night fiddling with small Allen keys. So having that there, perfect. Okay, that's pretty cool. I think we are going to go and just clear some space here. Actually, there's one thing that I want to test, and that is the backspacing or the optical path on this. So this is 17 and a half millimeters. 
with the plate installed, which is perfect. Because that means if you take a camera, most of these cooled astro cameras here, they will have uh, 17 and a half millimeters of optical path from the front into the actual sensor. Filter wheels are often 20, and with this being 17 and a half, that means when we put this on here, you end up with this flange here being the perfect 55 millimeters of back focus. So that's awesome. Everything just fits together. Okay, put that aside there. And let's get this thing installed. To install it, what you need to do is first remove the front plate. Even if it's the right size, the one you want, you're still gonna have to go and unscrew this. Last one, we can now take this one off and it reveals a number of different hole spacings in here. And you would just find the appropriate screw over in this pile <laughs> and then just use that to fit on whatever you need this to fit on. So in our case, we're going to get our all this stuff out of the way here. We're going to put our camera with our filter wheel here. Remove the dust cap. Like so. And then I think it's going to be this size. One, two, three and four. There. Okay, good. And then it should just be as simple as just putting these in the appropriate holes. So that fits, in my case, I'm gonna to have to use the middle ones here. Now, we just hold this up, especially if I get the right Allen key. Okay, that feels good. That's now installed. So now we just find the appropriate ring in my case, I think I need this one. This should be the M54. We just, yeah, check the dust cap is working. Notice also here in the back of these, you can see there's this, whoops, there's this um, like foam ring. It's like a squishy ring. And that would of course clamp down here on this surface here. And that's gonna help prevent light leak coming in from the side. So you, you have absolutely no leaking in through the side with the with that. So that's good. But I think before we do anything else, we probably want to adjust. And I think actually this is pretty good. If you can see that is just above the sensor prism. So that does not cover the sensor, but it is just above it. And that should be perfect. So now I can put this on. And now it's just a matter of taking all the small screws removed before. There we go, last one. Perfect, and there you have it. The orb access guider has now been installed and you can see that it is exactly narrow enough that when it's put onto a normal sized filter wheel with a uh, 20 millimeter optical pad, it's not gonna hit the camera, it's not gonna interfere. There is like a millimeter there between it, but it is not hitting and this rotates freely still. So that's perfect. There you go. And with that, our new SV238 is installed and we're ready to go. Unfortunately, I've had really bad weather the last month or so. So I haven't been able to go out and actually test this yet. Um, and I wanted to get this video out in time for the release of this because you can actually go and buy this now. It's just been released. Um, but if you stay tuned to the channel, I will go and make a comparison between using a guide scope and using an off axis guider with the same camera on the same rig on the same night, just moving the same camera over from the guide scope to the off axis guider to see what kind of performance improvements we're getting when we're using this setup over a guide scope. So, if you're interested in that, do stay tuned to the channel because that is going to come whenever the weather allows. An off axis guider, however, is a small mirror that you put into the light path of your main telescope that's siphons off. The first thing you want to do is you want to go in and remove any dew shields or anything else you have that would interfere with 